When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Jerry Williams, a.k.a. Greater Sapien. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I have another example of globe deniers that just don't understand the physics. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Every single time a person comes up and is denying the existence of the globe, whatever evidence they present shows either their ignorance of the science or their outright denial of it. I have yet to see anyone um, surpass that standard. I invite anyone out there that believes that the earth is not a globe to present your absolute best piece of evidence. Just one should be your best one. And I guarantee you it will be based either in ignorance of the science or the outright denial of it. Here's an example of a globe denier who once again is ignorant of the science. We've been there before with him. His name's uh, Todd Peachy. I don't know if that's his real name, but that's his, his screen name. Uh, we had an encounter with him before. This one came across um, uh, some time ago. It's been sitting in my outbox for a little while as something maybe to look at. And we're going to look at it, and it's real obvious to most of you where the issue is, but we're going to walk through it real quick and uh, show the error. Let's take a look. Let's try another example. We'll keep it even more simple now. For some of you guys that know your physics so well, you're applying them incorrectly, you're ignoring the spin of the earth, and you can't do that. What's momentum? Mass times velocity. What's velocity? That's speed that also has direction. It's a vector. Okay. Yes. So we're traveling north in a car at 100 miles per hour at a steady rate of speed. Oh, well, you wouldn't feel that because, uh, well, you're right. I'm going to stop it there just because he's mumbling what he's saying. You were uh, traveling north uh, at a constant rate of speed of 100 miles an hour. A detractor would say, you don't feel the motion if it's a constant rate of speed. That's what his little mumble was. I agree. He agrees. We're sitting still in the car. We're traveling east. We're near the equator. We're traveling east at 1,000 miles per hour. Now, because of the spin of the Earth, we're traveling east at, let's say, 1,000 miles per hour. The car's stationary, but we're traveling east at 1,000 miles per hour. Oh, well, you don't feel that because it's a constant. I agree. Oh, okay. So let's deal with that. He says the argument will be, well, you don't feel that acceleration because you're going at a constant rate of speed. And he agrees. It's very important. He agrees. You're moving at a constant rate of speed. You don't feel the acceleration. Totally agree. But now we're doing both. We're traveling both. north in a car at 100 miles per hour. We're traveling east at the same time at 1,000 miles per hour. Same time. In both cases, we have mass and velocity. So what do we have when we're every step of the way that we're also going this way? What do we have? A constant change in velocity. And what do we feel? Acceleration. And what is a change in velocity? An acceleration. You're trying to go this way. You're trying to go this way. Your body's going to try to go this way. Pause there. We're going to try to go this way. We're going to try to go this way. Your body's going to try to go this way. You're getting acceleration, is his claim, because of the change in velocity. Constant change in velocity. Now you guys are going to try to say the only, the only excuse you can come up with is, oh, well, well, we're up to speed in both directions. Now we're down to explaining the change in velocity. The constant change in velocity. Just going down an off-ramp, a little curve off-ramp at slow speeds. Your guts feel like they're flying out of your body. I hate that feeling. I like that Explain feeling. why we don't feel a constant change in velocity, which causes acceleration, which what do we feel? Acceleration. Doesn't get any simpler than that. Brain. Okay. So, the problem he has is he conceded to certain things, and in doing so, he sealed his own fate. 
He concedes that we feel acceleration. Acceleration, right? He also says if it's a constant speed, we don't feel it. He concedes to that. But his claim is if there's a constant change of velocity, that's acceleration, true, then we should feel that acceleration when we're going north at 100 miles an hour and east at, uh, at 1,000 miles per hour at the equator. I'm going to give you all a second to figure that problem out because it's pretty obvious. Okay, let's take a look. Now, acceleration is the change in velocity, right? So that change can come about by either changing direction or changing speed, right? So you can be going at 1,000 miles per hour east. You suddenly are going 1,005 miles per hour. That point where you're going from 1,000 to 1,005, that's acceleration. Or you could be going 1,000 miles per hour east and turn and go 1,000 miles per hour north that act of turning is changing your vector, changing your direction, and you feel acceleration during that, during that period of change. And then once you're going or you don't feel the acceleration anymore, that's a change in velocity. Velocity is both speed and direction. He, he mentioned that. So this is the scenario he has. I'll do a little drawing here in post. We're going north at 100 miles per hour. We are also, at the same time, going east at 1,000 miles per hour. According to him, we are constantly changing velocity as if we are stair-stepping in our direction, like we're going 100 miles an hour north, then we go 1,000 miles an hour east, then we go 100 miles an hour, then 1,000, then 100, then 1,000, then 100. That's not how we move. We're not going a hundred miles an hour north and a thousand miles an hour east. Let's look at the vectors. Basic Pythagorean theorem here will tell you that our new vector, our actual direction, is this here. And that, once we go through the equation, is about 1,005 miles per hour northeast. So we're not going a hundred miles an hour north and then changing velocity to 1,000 miles per hour east, we are traveling at 1,005 miles per hour northeast. That's our direction. It is a single vector with no change. How does he not understand that? Now, he brings that around to the concept of going around a curve with, uh, say, an on-ramp or an off-ramp. Now let's look at this, let's make a quick circle here. See the difference is you could be going at a constant rate of speed. Say you're just going 20 miles an hour around this curve. Pick a point on this curve. At this point, you are going that direction at 20 miles per hour. At this next point, you are going 20 miles per hour, still the same size of a vector, but the vector's direction has changed. You are now moving this direction at 20 miles per hour. You have accelerated, you have changed direction. You have changed direction. Unlike the traveling north vector, which you're not changing direction, you are going in one direction. That's northeast at 1,005 miles per hour. That is how vector addition works. Why doesn't he know that? Planet to even challenge me. Maybe you came by to 